the statistics or the, the studies have been done and they said that if you're an adult of average weight, here is what you accomplish in 24 hours. Your heart beats 103,000 times, 689 times. Your blood travels 168 million miles in 24 hours. You breathe 23,000 times. You inhale 438 cubit of, uh, cubic feet of air. You eat 3.25 pounds of food. Some of us do a little bit more. You drink 2.9 quarts of liquids. You lose 7, 8 pounds of waste. You speak 4,800 words. It goes a little bit more for the women. You move 750 muscles. Your nails grow by this much. Your hair grows by this much. And you exercise 7 million brain cells. That all happens in 24 hours. God has designed our bodies in a very unique way. In the scripture, in Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, and I want you to look to the screen, it says, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in His sight, give ear to His commandments and keep all His statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. So God is saying that if we obey what God wants us to do. Now for the nation of Israel, obedience to God did not just mean moral things. It not, did not just mean, you know, not to get drunk, not to commit adultery. But a lot of the things in the Old Testament included also the, the diet laws. There were certain things like they were not allowed to eat pork. And God was saying, if you obey my statutes, He says, you won't get sick. Now we all understand that we live in a broken world. Even if, if you obey God, that is, you're still able to catch a flu and everything. And that's where God ends that in case you do, for I am the Lord who heals you. And I want us to understand that divine healing and divine health are equally important. Divine health is as important as divine healing. And that scripture tells us that God is the healer but it also tells us that if we listen and live a life by certain guidelines we can prevent sickness and disease to happen in our life and both as the trainer and the doctor have told us today that it's actually proven today by, by studies it's proven today by the medicine that if you live a life in the way that God wants you to live you will prevent certain diseases that you will not need healing but even if you will need healing we have God who heals us. Healing is divine but health is our obedience. Health is our discipline. Health is based on our choices. In Solomon, uh, King Solomon says in Proverbs, he says that wisdom has built her house and she has established seven pillars. And most of you will agree and I think the doctor will agree as well. There's, there's about, uh, I think they have five pillars of health. The first one is to drink water. And the reason why is because you know our body is 70 or more or less a percent of water. Our lungs are 90% of water. Our brain is 95% of water. Our skin is 80% of water. Our bones are 20 uh, 24% 20 of water. Our muscle are 75% of water and our blood is 85% water. It's very interesting that our Lord Jesus Christ doesn't call himself great coke or great juice. He is the living water. Your body is made out of water and when you give it water, it replenishes itself. I'm going to be the first one to admit uh, this is one of those things that did not come naturally and did not come good for me. I dislike water. I think it tastes pointless. There's no like if I have water, I have to have something in it. But that changed some time ago. When I heard a story of another minister who mentioned that uh, this minister went to the doctor and the doctor told this minister how much water they drink. You know they recommend eight by eight, so eight uh, cups of eight ounces a day or taking your weight divided by two, that's how many ounces you should drink. And the doctor asked her, uh, do you drink that much water? She says, no, I don't drink water at all. And I don't want to drink water. And he used the illustration to her that helped her and it helped me. He says, if you go and use a, use a toilet in your house and you don't flush the toilet and you don't remove the, those uh, nasty liquids out of the toilet for a day, what would happen? She says, well, the house, the bathroom will stink. After a second day, what would happen? She said, it will stink more and the toilet will stink and everything is going to stink. He says, imagine going for months without flushing your toilet. 
she says that no of course I would always flush my toilet he said your body every time you eat it collects all kinds of bacteria and the water flushes that out when you don't drink enough water what happens is your body becomes like that it only collects the bacteria it only collects those things and then you will get sick not just by what you eat but by the fact that those things don't get flashed in your life and so really want to encourage each one of us in church be a people I love America because in America every restaurant you go they give you a cup of water you go in Ukraine and you're gonna have to pay a foot and a leg to be able to find water because they don't offer water and so people don't drink as much and in our country it's been extended to do so number two is we all know this is very basic is healthy eating is healthy eating in the Bible, Bible tells us a lot about food. First people, Adam and Eve, ate themselves out of the garden. First temptation Jesus had wasn't smoking or drinking. It was with food. Esau ate himself out of his promise, out of his inheritance. We see Sodom and Gomorrah, one of their major sins Sodom and Gomorrah struggled with was gluttony. We see Apostle Paul warns us in Philippians not to make our stomach our God. Now sometimes people have a disease or like doctor mentioned in genetics that they're, they're prone to you know excessive weight and everything but we have to examine our life. We have to monitor as believers one of the seven evils that the church early fathers passed on to the church is the sin of gluttony. Sometimes we're so passionate about other sins we don't struggle with and completely pat the sin of gluttony especially it's so easy to do that in America because we make enough money to be able to buy what we want and like Mark Twain mentioned once that I really like this quote he says the only way to keep your health is to eat what you don't want drink what you don't like and do what you rather not but it's truth in order to be obedient to God as a Christian you have to watch what you eat a lot of things in the Bible God specifically told Israel which animals to eat which not to eat Bible specifically told us in Genesis that herbs and the things that grow out of the ground are for our food and we see today that a lot of the food industry not all of them but a lot of food industry it's all really money industry it's not necessarily caring for your health it's caring for their pocket and we have to watch what we eat can somebody say amen you have to monitor our diet and monitor what we eat and then the third pillar of our health is active living and some of you may say well Jesus didn't talk about exercise maybe it's, you came to church today and you were surprised to have you know us talking about fitness right from the pulpit the only difference is Jesus did not work in the office and he didn't drive a car everywhere Jesus wanted to go he used his legs today we use our cars the way people work there had to do involve their physical strength all the time today most of the work most of the work today involves sitting or more sitting and after more sitting at the work we come back home and we do more sitting behind the tv and so that's why active living has to be a prioritized prioritized i remember i went to my uh, into the ukraine and i saw my grandpa who is 90 90 or 93 years of age they're still debating how old he is i just stick with the 90. And I saw, and my grandpa started out telling, I asked, I asked him, how are you doing grandpa? He said, lad, this is the first year I don't have a horse. This is the first year I don't have a pig. The first year I don't have chickens. And this is the first year I'm not planting tomatoes. Oh, but last month I chopped all of that wood. He showed me how much wood. We, my dad bought a machine that chops wood. That kills wood because it's painful my grandpa is 90 years of age and he chopped that wood by himself he says and last few weeks I cut the grass you know and he showed me the lawn where he cut the grass and no he didn't use a lawnmower he used this long stick which has this sharp blade and you go like this you go half of that lawn and you will lose 20 pounds for sure it's very intense workout and I'm looking at him and I'm like how in the world he is able to do that my dad my grandpa never went to the gym but every day he lived was the gym. My grandpa, you know, didn't care about his diet because he grew all of his food. And everything he ate was organic. His pork was organic because he ate only good food. And no wonder people like that, they live longer and they live more healthier. And so if you live your life more active and you don't have to necessarily just go to gym to be active. It's just about going hiking. It's about going rollerblading. It's about going swimming. It's about going doing, doing those things where your heart is constantly pumping and where you're constantly living an active life. Can somebody say yes? The fourth 
a pillar of health is restorative sleep and you can say amen to that sleep is very good and the best sleep is between 10 to 10 p.m to 10 to 2 a.m and it really helps a lot of the things in your brain because of shortage of sleep 27 percent we have a higher risk of obesity when we sleep less they say that 48 percent higher heart disease you're five times have a higher risk of diabetes 20 percent of accidents are due to lack of sleep which is about a hundred thousand a year of accidents happen because people didn't sleep enough it results in a thousand five a thousand five hundred deaths 71,000 injuries 32 percent reduced alertness with 1.5 less of sleep they said that if you sleep less than five hours it's equal to five percent blood alcohol in your blood so if you sleep less and I understand that uh, most of us who are younger you know they recommend uh, you know it was a seven to eight hours of sleep but if you go on less than five hours of sleep all the time it's equivalent your ability to act think is equivalent to the person who has five percent of alcohol in their blood and I understand it's very it, you know if you have to work very hard and you go for seasons but God created sleep and we have to enjoy it. the only place we won't sleep will be after we die because we're gonna be in heaven amen and the last one is the pillar is positive attitude having positive emotions constantly filling yourself with positive feelings watching positive films reading positive things surrounding yourself with people who are positive having faith in the midst of trials and tribulations the studies have been even done when people had certain diseases and they would watch comedy for hours you know it would burn certain diseases in their body many people have diseases today because of worry and anxiety with that said we understand that this is most of you this is nothing new it's common sense and you've been told that by the doctors you've been told that by your parents and today you're being reminded of that in the church but like you already have heard and we already have heard there are chances and there are times when we do things like these or we stay active um, we work out we eat right and we still have certain attacks or certain diseases or certain things that come and attack our health and this is for just few minutes I want to talk about and this is something we're going to pray for the story I want to bring to you is the story of Samson it's recorded in Judges chapter 16 that when Samson was captured by Philistines and he had to grind weed he was blind his hair was cut and therefore he lost his power and as he was there his hair started to grow back and he had his power again he came to the house where all of the princes of Philistines were gathered all of the big dogs you know the, the officials all of the people who were responsible enemies for this enslavement and the and the difficult life that Israel has endured they were there in that house and Samson asked a little boy said could you lead me to the pillars of the house and when the little boy led Samson to the pillars of the house Samson the Bible says he felt the pillars and he leaned himself against the pillars and when the pillars were shaken the house collapsed and the enemy all the chief enemies were destroyed many times in our life there are invisible pillars that uphold our enemy sickness and disease these invisible pillars can come in the form of demons they can come in the form of generational curses we see that in the scriptures that many times people were sick in the Bible and Jesus instead of healing them he would cast out an evil spirit he would destroy the pillar for example one woman was coming to church to a synagogue for 18 years and the scripture says that she was bent for 18 years most likely she's been to the best doctors but because she had a spiritual problem Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit pushed the spiritual pillars in her life by delivering her by casting out the spirit of infirmity and the Bible says she was made straight when the enemies were defeated she regained her health we see that in Apostle Peter's mother-in-law she was sick with fever now we all get sick with fever we all catch fever but Jesus comes to his mother-in-law and instead of laying his hands and healing her the Bible says that he rebuked fever 
The word rebuke there is the same word that is mentioned when Jesus faced a demon possessed man in the synagogue and rebuked a demon. That means behind that fever it wasn't just a cold that she caught. It was a demonic attack on her health. We as Christians believe we are responsible to God to live our responsible life in our health. But there is one more aspect of health that we have to address and that is in the spiritual world there are pillars many times that hold sickness and disease and you can attack one disease and attack one sickness but if those pillars are intact they keep the house alive. But today I have to tell you about a friend that we all have. His name is the Holy Spirit. Samson's had, Samson had hair the Holy Spirit has power and if we the lads if we are those little children today that the Holy Spirit comes into our life and the Bible says if the Spirit of Him who raised Christ from the dead lives within us He is there to give life to our mortal body the Holy Spirit does not just come to stand by the pillars, by the problems, spiritual problems in our physical health. He is asking you today, lead me to the pillars and let's push them apart. The Holy Spirit wants to destroy the spiritual forces that are affecting our physical health. The Holy Spirit is not just here to tickle us and just to make us cry. He is not just here to make us just feel better about ourselves. He is a spiritual force and He is very powerful and wants to destroy other spiritual forces. We've seen countless times when a man who came through four years ago, he had leukemia. He was diagnosed for over a year and a half of leukemia. His insurance was spent at seven thousand dollars every single month on the medications. He already wasn't able to work. He worked in one of the best restaurants in his town. He wasn't able to work and when he came to the services that we had in the track four years ago, during the service when prayer was being offered and the Holy Spirit was going in the audience and pushing pillars away, he started to feel uncomfortable like he wanted to throw up. He was brought to the front where he vomited all kinds of things. All of that vomiting was simply Holy Spirit pushing pillars away. When he got up from his knees he said, I felt so much better. And he went back home. He actually didn't even think that he got healed. He just thought he got freed from some demonic activities in his life. As he went back to the doctor, the doctor examined his blood and found out he was a hundred percent cure of leukemia. He came back to our church, brought his medical report and it's four years and this young man Nabil is completely free from every trace of leukemia in his body. Every pillar of sickness has to be brought down today in Jesus name. Why? Because in the Old Testament when Israel traveled to the promised land there was a pillar they had. It was the pillar of fire. The Holy Spirit is a greater pillar that we have and because the Holy Spirit is on our side through Him every generational curse can be brought down. Every disease and sickness that cannot be cured or explained or there is no connection to it. You've lived healthy life. You've disciplined yourself. You ate right. Nobody in your family maybe have had that and it just came out of nowhere. You have a friend. His name is the Holy Spirit. Join hands with the Holy Spirit today. Say, Holy Spirit, I invite you in my body. You live there. Let's push away every pillar of arthritis. Let's push away every pillar of diabetes. Let's push away every pillar of cancer, of growth. Let's push away every pillar of every skin disease, every blood disease, every bone infection, every other disease. It has no legal place in my body because I'm a friend of the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say amen? With that said, I want us today to prepare for prayer. We're going to pray today and the prayer that we're going to offer today together with the Holy Spirit, I want you to imagine in your mind right now you're not alone. If you're facing a disease, if you're facing sickness, if you have been diagnosed and you have fought the best, I want you to know today one message, you are not alone. The Holy Spirit is with you and He wants to fight with you.
he wants you to hold his hand if you are believing for someone's healing I want you to remember you're not alone the power that heals it's not the preacher it's not a certain charm it's not a certain chant it's not a certain word or certain phrase it's a person and his name is the Holy Spirit and he will do what diet cannot do he will do what doctors cannot do he will do what fitness cannot do he can help us in the areas we are completely helpless just a few years ago three years ago there was a mother that came a mother and a father that came with their child from Olympia they had a, he had asthma for over six years and he was already been diagnosed and, and they just said there's nothing we can do the best professionals they took him to the best professionals because the father himself was a doctor and he was completely helpless and when he came to receive prayer during the prayer we were not just praying God heal him we were praying to break every chain of the enemy and these prayers may seem just charismatic some people may seem like oh these just young rustic boys running around here screaming they don't know what they're screaming about yes to the to the extent we might not know what's going on in the spiritual world but the Holy Spirit used Samson used the little boy and the Holy Spirit uses me and you he uses your prayer and my prayer to push away the pillars when that prayer was being offered I remember because I was praying for that young man right here on this side curly hair I actually thought it was a girl so when I was praying I said Lord God heal this girl I didn't know it was a young man not a, not a girl nevertheless in our lack of understanding God still used our prayer six months later we received a message from that family that ever since that prayer the little boy was no longer needing any other equipment to help him breathe it's been now three years and they come every single year to our service just to give glory to God and they were completely completely experienced a miracle in their family let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ less than six months after the boy's healing the mother was diagnosed with tuberculosis she was already placed in a different housing she lost her job and she, most of you remember those of you who were here about two and a half years ago when she came she even had a covering over her mouth and she came with faith she says the same Holy Spirit that defeated the spiritual forces in the life of my son he can help me he says I'm seeking the best physicians and I'm seeking the best therapy but I also know Jesus is the greatest physician he is the best doctor and I came to an appointment with him and when prayer was being offered spiritual forces were pushed down she went back home her recovery became miraculous she recovered in two weeks out of that disease in a month or so she was released back got a clean bill of health now she's working and TB is no longer part of her health to God be the glory I ask you that today we agree together to bring down every pillar of the enemy and establish our health in Jesus name do you receive it today in Jesus name